the big day after the state of the city, and I think overwhelming reception was that it's a very positive, optimistic tone that you had in your inaugural state of the city. And you know, six months into a pandemic, this has been an extremely difficult year. How do you have such optimism in that speech? Sure. Well, it, it has been a difficult year. But as I said in the speech, it's the interactions that I have with people. It's seeing Boiseans respond to the hardship that so many of us are facing um, with this commitment to people in our community that keeps me optimistic. And also there is the reality that if you look historically at our country, it's when we've had the biggest challenges that we've made some of the biggest advancements. And our community, like we, our community has to have leaders right now that recognize that and that are optimistic. So on a daily basis, you know, I look for and reflect on um, the gifts that so many people in this community are giving. I saw comments after your speech that how can I be, as a person in Boise, how can I be optimistic when I've lost my job this year, yeah. my family's trying to make ends meet, it is not good for me as a citizen of Boise. And it's encouraging to see the mayor's optimistic, but to the people that are still struggling and having as hard as a time now as they were earlier this year, yeah. how can they be optimistic? And it is hard. I mean, people lost their jobs. Our, the, our cost of living is increasing. And even before the pandemic, this was a problem. And now even more so, people are really struggling. And then we're juggling kids at home, all of these different things that none of us should have to deal with or address. And I would say to those in our community that are hurting so much that you know, I just want them to know that I'm thinking about them on a daily basis, that we're trying to figure out how we support small businesses, what we can do for our residents to ease um, the burdens that we all have right now, and that there are so many people and organizations in this community that are building partnerships trying to do that. Handling a pandemic, I'm sure, was not on your list of priorities when you came into office. I'm sure you know everyone thinks about it in the back of their mind, but I mean, still difficult today, six months into this. When you think back uh, March, April, May, and the steps you took, the steps the city of Boise took, how would you evaluate the initial handling of that, that panic, that rush? Sure. So, of course, it's not something that anybody expects to deal with. And in many ways, for me, it was just those things that were in books that were kind of scary, not something that we'd be dealing with day by day. But that's the same for everyone, not just me, right? And when I think back to those winter days, you know, it was spring, but it felt like winter in March. Um, I think that we did what we had to do. We learned um, from the mistakes that other cities and countries had made and not shutting down soon enough. And we didn't want to replicate that mistake. And so the state took steps, we took steps and it hurt people financially. Um, but for me, what was important for our administration, our city was always to put people and their health and life um, ahead of the other decisions. And then in the long run, we be, believe we'd be doing the right thing. You as a, a leader, the mayor of Boise, you were ahead of the curve in terms of the state level, closing businesses, taking big steps. And at the time, people said, Mayor McLean's going too far. She shut my business. She cost my family money. Now I don't know if I'll be able to have a successful business eight months from now. Looking back on March and April, when those really the toughest decisions were made, do you regret any of those decisions, decisions, or would you do it again the same? You know, somebody said to me as we were making the decisions that if I made them at the right time, then there wouldn't be as many um, people in the hospital. And people would say, why'd you do this? If I made it too late, people would say, why didn't you do this? And so it was, it was in, you know, recognizing that they were tough decisions and we believe that we made the right call. The governor made the right call. And it had real impacts on many, many people. Um, but by taking those steps early, we prevented, at a time we weren't ready, um, a large, large spike. And at the end of the day, we knew that we had to do that if we wanted to recover economically in the long run. And there were many businesses throughout the city that were asking us to take action because they were seeing already the impacts that people's concerns about the virus were having on their businesses. You had a lot of tough decisions to make, but one of the biggest ones, as we've highlighted, is the balance of public health and economics and business owners and yeah. livelihoods. How do you balance that? How do you sit at a desk and look at information and talk with your team and say, this is the line where we have to value 
business over health or health over business because it seems like an almost impossible equation with so many unknowns. You have to have healthy people to have a strong economy. And so for us, um, protecting health, protecting our residents was and will be front and center. Uh, six months into this, you know, we still have people, we have the mask ordinance out there, people are resistant to it. Um, I've heard people in the community say, I felt like the city of Boise gave up. They were really aggressive in the beginning. We had mask mandates, we had businesses closed, but as the summer months went on, I felt like they maybe gave up and it got too hard. Now, conversely, there were people that say, Mayor McLean went too far. She shouldn't have taken so many steps, you know, through six months. How do you look at this now six months in and where you're going now? Did the city give up? Did things loosen up too early? Well, um, the, the governor of the state and the health district you know, made health decisions on what could open and when. And we saw spikes as a result of that. And that's why we put the mask order in before the health district did, because we recognized, and with the learning that came with the pandemic, it seemed weekly we were learning new things. The impact that masks would have on curbing the spread led us to decide to put that mask order in place. And public health professionals said to me, if you make this decision and you increase mask usage, then you're getting where you need to be to make sure that you're protecting public health. And so we haven't given up. This, this consider, continues to be um, something that we think about and work with every day while we're also figuring out how we move ahead um, and recognizing that for the next year, 18 months, it will be this give and take of health decisions and reopening decisions, health decisions and ordinances that could protect our health and while trying to rebuild the economy. A perfect dichotomy for that equation to me is a few blocks from here, Boise on the block, you have the program to have the restaurants spill out onto the sidewalks, you close 8th Street. The problem I've seen on weekends is that there's a lot of people down there. There's a large concentration of people. So on one hand, you're helping these businesses by expanding their patios and having more business, but you also have people that are down there that aren't social distancing, they aren't wearing masks, they're out there like it's a regular summer night. When you have a situation like that, how does that balance? Sure, so um, we look at it and say, and recognize that people are outside and think they don't need to wear masks. So it's on us to continue to talk about the importance of doing that and that it's better to do something than to do nothing to make sure that we're protecting health and at the same time supporting businesses that are really struggling. Of course, with a lot of your decisions, you had very loud critics. There was a campaign to recall you that has been suspended. A, a major voice in that was she doesn't want to be part of our Boise. She's trying to change Boise. She wants to make this Portland or Austin, and she doesn't represent us. Some people have said you have a socialist agenda. They took items in your report and said she wants to do these things, even though they were just recommendations. But how do you assure the people that are so critical of you to the point where they wanted you out of office that you represent them and that you're listening to them and that you're here to, I guess, take their thoughts into account in forming this city? I am here because the public elected me to protect this place that we all deeply love. Um, this is home for so many, from so many places. And there's nothing other than Boise in terms of who we are and what we're focused on. And every day, and my record the last nine months shows it, we are thinking about how we address the very real economic issues, the need for affordable housing, the, the importance and the imperative of trying to build an economy as we switch to clean energy and protecting the soul of this place that we love so much. Um, and I just encourage everyone to not listen to the some voices, um, but to look at the progress we've made, the steps we've taken, our budget, um, and the priorities that we've shown are clear. Do you ever feel that you have to win these people over that are so critical of you? Or there, is there a point as a city leader that you realize it's a losing battle, you'll listen, but you can't convince everyone? I will always listen to the people of Boise take into account um, the deep passion that people feel for this place that we love. Um, and then it's my job to be in the balance of opposing viewpoints and make decisions with an eye towards the future and the focus on getting us through this moment. Pre-pandemic, as you're heading into office and newly elected, affordable housing was something that was big on your agenda. Yeah. With the pandemic, that problem gets compounded. Um, you talked about how important in the state of the city affordable housing is. You have the public land trust. 
explain how you know, don't just talk about affordable housing. How are you making it happen? Yeah. Not in the past, but as well as going forward. Sure. And the land trust is such a big part of moving forward. Um, as a council person, I wanted to see this happen. And now as mayor, it's a priority. And we recognize that the pandemic has worsened the impact on some for affordable housing. But most importantly, in some ways, it's laid bare the fact that so many people in our community are struggling to find a home they can afford with the wages that we make here. And a housing land trust is just one piece of our puzzle or portfolio for affordability. Where we're acquiring land and we're working to make sure that it's in areas along transit corridors and the pieces are available to then put forward um, for housing proposals that will require um, housing availability for people at different budgets. And while that project's going on, it's no secret, there's a lot of people that from outside of Idaho want to move to Boise. It's an attractive city. It's more affordable than other beautiful cities across the country. How do you balance the influx of people who quite frankly have more money than a lot of Idahoans yeah. You keep Boiseans in their homes, but also welcome all these new people to the community. These are the pressures that as our city grows, we're gonna to continue to face. And it's why so many of our residents are struggling to keep up with rent, to address um, rising property tax values that impact their mortgage. And so first off this year, we decided not to take the 3%. We did take growth in terms of property tax revenue because we don't want people that are already here to have to pay more for the people that are coming. And so we recognize that our decisions around property tax and tightening our belts would have an impact, a positive impact um, on residents' property tax bills. We are um, advancing the Housing Land Trust. We will have this fall and into the winter a uh, housing affordability ordinance for the public to weigh in on. Um, and then we're also looking at a zoning rewrite to make sure that we are able um, to allow enough housing in our community to be built to meet the demand that exists. Climate change is something that you've been passionate about um, on national television. There's a clip of you talking about how important green energy is. And for a city level official, it could just be a talking point. It could just be, oh, we need to be green. We have to have good, good climate. We could just plant 100,000 trees, which is an initiative that is important. But as a city leader, how do you make good on these big ideas of climate change within Boise. Sure, and cities around the country and world have recognized that it's in the best interest of their residents to try to take advantage of the challenges related to climate and turn the transition towards clean energy into economic opportunities for the residents. And that's what I, um, working with city council and our city team, plan to do here. And so we make it real by President Cl um, Council President Clegg has the great tr tree planting initiative. We have a clean energy goal that I advance, advance as a council member and now as mayor, we're working to beat that goal. And then of course we're developing, and, and I stated in the speech last night, by 2035, a carbon neutral city government. You know, that's again, a goal that I aim to beat. And then we'll use what we learned from that to help the city transition overall to carbon neutrality. These things are important because as climate changes the world and even here locally, um, the cost of power could increase, the cost of water could increase. These are pocketbook issues. And so not only do we wanna protect the pocketbooks of our residents in the long run by planning now and trying to get ahead, but we also believe that if we take steps now, we'll have an advantage and be able to grow economically and create opportunity for our residents. In your mind, what are the tangible steps of becoming carbon neutral? Because leaders for years have said that, and then you look five, 10 years down the line, nothing really happened. So in your mind, how does that really come to fruition? Oh, there are great models out there now of leaders making it happen because they recognize that we must. Here, when we think about carbon neutrality for city government, we'll be looking at the impact of our fleet. We'll be looking at um, the source of our power. We determine how we build buildings more efficiently um, so that we need less power. There are different tactical steps that we can take as city government to ultimately reduce our costs here, be prepared for the future, and pass those savings on to our residents. There are several very loud nights in front of the Capitol, or excuse me, in front of City Hall uh, with protests. Yeah. Uh, defend the police, Black Lives Matter, all kinds of different groups. And a, a big talking point is racism. And you talked about in your state of the city that racism is a problem. It exists here in Boise. 
and it's not something that you can just have a seminar about and talk about to fix. Like with uh, the green energy, how do you tangibly address systematic racism that, as you acknowledged, has existed here in Boise? Sure. And, and you know, it, these are interesting times because we're dealing with challenges across the board like no other, the pandemic, climate impacts, and of course now us being called upon to address um, racial justice and systemic racism. And it's not an easy conversation to have. It makes many of us uncomfortable, um, but there are steps that we can take, and I wanna do it right, that we don't do something quickly and then have repercussions later on, but that we actually have an authentic conversation with the community, work together in partnership with our council, we address our own hiring practices and the culture we create here at City Hall. Um, and then yes, tackle the very real issues of police policy and other things that we're being called upon to address. Um, as a city official back in January pre-pandemic, what was the biggest thing on your list that you wanted to get done that was made impossible because of what happened in 2020? So, I, you can't do it all, but I still believe that everything will be possible once we get through this moment. My priorities then were to address affordable housing, to build economic opportunity by tackling the, the benefits that will come with the transition to clean energy, um, and to look at creating an actionable plan for regional transit. I'd say probably of those, transit is less likely to happen immediately because so many fewer people are moving, driving, moving to work. Um, but that said, these are all incredibly important steps that as our community grows, we have to be poised to take so that we can pr be prepared um, to ensure in the long run our residents have the same quality of life that they've had for so long. State of the city would be a self-evaluation as well as a city-wide evaluation, as I'm sure as you were working on what you were going to say. What area did you key on on something that you think you need to improve in as a city leader? I think um, you're right, we can all improve in so many ways and as I was writing that speech and working with my team for what I wanted to talk about um, it was for me so important that we nod to the moment that we give um, at, and, and share with the public our deep sense of optimism but recognizing that so many people are hurting and there's only so much that we can do um, and it's so important moving forward that we continue to address each and every issue and with this sense that we, we need to build partnerships. We have to give each other grace in these tough, tough times and keep people um, and the hardships, but most importantly, the hope they have to get through them at the center of the work that we do. You answered all my questions. Is there anything else that you think the city of Boise needs to hear from you in September of 2020? I'd just um, love to sh say to our residents that I'm incredibly grateful um, for the opportunity to be um, here at this moment, to work with so many people to address the challenges we have, um, and that I think daily, um, and hear daily from folks that are really struggling, um, and th my deep belief that we will get through this, it won't be easy, um, but that we will get through this and be stronger for it, um, guides all of the actions that we take.